strokes, their probable causes, and what to do about it. Today, I'm not giving case studies or anything like that. I'm talking about a personal experience with my wife who had a stroke in uh, December of uh, 2005 that nearly took her away. And since that time, we've had all kinds of uh, doctors and medications and stuff. And she's had doctors before when she was going to them. So the doctors helped her when, when she had her stroke, but they did not prevent the stroke, nor do they prevent 750,000 strokes a year in this country. Now, and then we found out there's certain basic tests they don't even bother doing any anymore. When they put a person on a blood thinner to prevent strokes, and her stroke was probably caused by a, a auricular fibrillation and where the heart swirls the blood around till it throws some fibrin, if, it's, if it has that tendency. And um, they didn't have her uh, thyroid medication quite right either. In fact, someone was fooling with it before that time. And uh, today, uh, sometime after this, and another fractured leg, which put her through the whole thing again, uh, she was fired by the neurologist because I took her off the Coumadin that she had been on for two years almost. And uh, they say, in fact, the neurologist today who fired us said, I'll see you in the emergency room with your next stroke. Something similar to that in that tone. All heart, this guy. And then he said, basically, it was all my fault because of my chiropractic tricks. Well, um, it wasn't my chiropractic tricks that put her in there. It was the, the doctors and cardiologists, et cetera, that she went to. Um, but what they, and the doctors are safe when they give you Coumadin. Uh, we have a, now a multitude of research, and you have to differentiate scientists from doctors. Doctors claim they're scientists, and some may be scientists, but most of them are doctors following the party line, just like Republicans and Democrats. And they're on base and safe when they're giving you these blood thinners. Now, what they don't tell you is they put a black box on Coumadin and Warfarin in the fall of 2006. And I was watching my wife go downhill by the rules to where she couldn't string a sentence together. Her face was all gray blotches. And she was getting all kinds of things on her legs. And it was apparent that there, she was going to die by the numbers. Well, we rebelled against that. And uh, we've had now fights with three doctors, the neurologist and the, the GP, and the, um, <laughs> the personality of the uh, neurologist was that he blew up. His, his uh, authority had been challenged, and he fired us. Even though I told him today that uh, the Coumadin was indeed killing her, and that it does damage the arteries, and there's scientific proof for that. And that uh, her mind was going, because it was also damaging her brain, and that's the reality that we were able to read. And uh, that she is much better now. Her blood pressure was perfect, her heart was perfect, but he told her that she's gonna have a stroke because she's not taking the rat poison that he told her to take. So, as he was firing us, I also told him that one of the things that we recently discovered about my wife was that she has celiac disease. Now, celiac disease is the, one of the most undiagnosed conditions in this country. It may take five or 10 years to get that. We mentioned that before. And we have now put her on a uh, no gluten diet and uh, she's improving day by day. And we use things like antioxidants and things to speed that along. And she's doing better and better. So even though they're telling me I'm going to kill her, I think I saved her life, and I think we're proving it every day because everyone around us can see the change. So what are the factors that cause strokes in a country that has uh, the most expensive, most advanced medical care in the world, where you may spend $100,000 in a day to get all this life-saving uh, services, 
and you find that uh, 750,000 people a year are going down with this condition. Well, there's a whole raft of things that medicine no longer does. They do not do a simple sedimentation rate and hers went up to like 80 when she broke her leg and she was down in Charleston Hospital. When we had it down to 17, and um, she also had, uh, uh, nobody took her viscosity. They don't do these simple tests. They're stuck with the INR measuring the coumadin and they're on base and they're safe. And if that doesn't wiggle waggle, everybody's happy even though the patient may die in a year or two or three because they're old or they're discrepant or whatever they got. So. There's an unhappy situation in this country that exists because of differences in technology and not using, utilizing the technology that they have. The simple test, sedimentation rate means blood, blood cells fall out in a certain time. And the blood viscosity is the blood measured against distilled water. And it ranges from a scale of 1.5 to 1.9. Well, I've already, we've only had two in all the hospital stays she's been in, there's only two. And we now have her down, going down one whole notch, which is about uh, 20%. Uh, and then we only have two or three readings, and that's it. But her, her, we have brought down her uh, uh, viscosity, which is good. And uh, we're now, uh, uh, because celiac disease also has another factor, other factors. It may raise the sedimentation rate, which thickens the blood. The metals that we are able to find that most people can't find because they don't do energy testing um, is an irritation to the body. And inflammation doesn't even know its cause. Inflammation, when it gets an insult, starts an inflammatory process. And part of this anti-inflammatory process changes, apparently, the uh, electrical charges on the blood because they start to clump up. The viruses and bacteria that medicine does not find, that we find all the time, MRSA staph and uh, hepatitis C, all these things, also are factors in causing irritation in the body and a inflammatory antigenic reactions, which may play a big part in the clumping of the blood. So we're happy with taking her off the coumadin. We now have her on an enzyme called natokinase. And before you run out and start buying natokinase without any help or anything else, it has to have the vitamin K removed because th that helps, as you understand, the clotting mechanism. So you want to know what you're doing. You, if you can find a doctor, if you can find a doctor that will work with you in natokinase or, or the other one, and I can't remember the name of that, it was just stronger, um, that's the only way you should do it. You shouldn't just buy it from any company on the web or any health place that comes along. And uh, if you can find a doctor that can diagnose these various uh, late, so-called latent infections, the scientists call them uh, small colony variants, and we call them infections because they're in there, and when we get them out, the symptoms go. So I just wanted to share some of, you, some of these thoughts with you about stroke, uh, blood thinners, uh, the state of medicine, and the fact that people are probably unnecessarily dying because they don't really know what they're doing. Thank you.